Hi, I'm Ted. I'm Katie. In today's video, we're going to show you how we turned uh, that bus floor into this. So we're going to address this floor and uh, keep looking it away and grinding it away and looking at the pieces of it. And uh, I'm thinking, again, these cross members out here are pretty well rotted out, out to about here. And so I think what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to unbolt them from underneath. I'm going to take a sawzall and I'm going to cut this whole metal section right out. That way I can lift those cross members out. And I'm just going to take them to a machine shop and um, get some fabricated. Uh, and then I'll buy it. I think I can, if I cut this middle piece out, I can cut it in half. And I think I can use that to patch that and patch that and just get another piece for the middle since i got to pull it up anyway to get at those cross members because it's too hard to get at underneath. We'll see how it goes. All right, I want to get these, uh, the tubs out of the wheel wells. And uh, I don't know if it's easier to, to kind of rust it out. I might be able to find some actually pretty cheap. And so I may just try to replace them completely rather than try to fix them. But uh, I'm going to get them out of there anyway so we can get the floor out and we'll see, see what they look like. So they're held on with these rivets. So I got a, my air chisel with a punch. I'm just going to punch out the center of these. Then I'll place the punch with a chisel and pop those rivets off. Uh, you're gonna do ceilings, ceiling rivets. This is definitely worth the investment. And I'm hoping this pops right out. Like that. All right, so I cut the bolts that go up into the cross members all around, and I'm gonna just follow this line across where this cross member is and cut this section of the floor out. Um, so I can get it to cross number and get it out of there and replace it. I checked on to make sure there weren't any hoses and wires and lines underneath. So looks like I'm alright. I'm not going to go that deep anyway. Alright. Cut along that seam. Cut along that seam. Uh, had to cut off the... Uh, Rotted off cross member on that side just enough so I can get it out through the chair rails, but let's haul it up maybe and see what happens. So as you can see we're getting pretty extreme here. Uh, again, a lot of the cross members in the middle were rotten. Uh, the floor on the side was rotten. And then trying to match the, uh, the patches with these contours uh, just seemed impossible for me to do right you know? so like I said just kind of gonna rip the whole thing out and start from scratch um, of course the challenge is well there's no such thing as an easy project right um, the floor is actually welded each time um, with these contours and that weld metal is just really hard so we're trying a whole bunch of strategies to try to um, to cut it um, tried reciprocating saw with a diamond blade, tried grinding wheels, uh, and again, it's just hard going. So we'll just kind of keep uh, plugging away with different methods, and then we'll go back and forth between, you know, of course, my, tried to go uh, cordless, and my uh, sawzall is just battery powered, so it's like, you know, drying that battery down, go weld some stuff, come back, cutting, so we just kind of keep going back and forth, but that's what we're doing. Well, I was managed to get that floor off after lots of uh, cutting wheel action and pry bar. Um, I was hoping I could save this uh, cross member, but I don't think that's going to be the case. So, the good news is I was worried that this cross member held up the whole back end of the body. Um, but it's completely rusted off on that side, so I think it just ties into the back bumper um, and the cross member in the, the far back. 
so which is good. I was worried about having to sort of support this on jacks and getting this out, but um, I'm gonna have to t cut this out, or I don't know if I can get those bolts out or not. They're pretty rusted on, and just build a new cross member and uh, start from scratch, pretty much. So this is how I'm fabricating the cross members here. Uh, I might have gotten, you know, sort of the rectangular tube steel, but I, it's hard to find in just the right dimensions. And so, and I think this is a little bit cheaper anyway. So I got, this is an uh, inch and a half tube steel, eighth of an inch thick. And um, that way I can cut these little cross pieces to get the right uh, width on them. And uh, so I, you know, cleaned up the outside of the metal, ground it down, put a slight bevel on the edge. Um, it's not perfect, but I think it'll do. So just drop them in there like that. So I'm going to tack weld them in, and then this one's a little bent. It's kind of a bummer, but I'll try to fix it, I guess. And uh, hopefully it'll work. Okay, not the uh, not the best welding out there, but you know, like the flux core tend to be a little bit messy, but I'm getting better. And so I will actually that looks pretty decent. All right, so I'll grind it down, see if we got any pinholes, and then uh, I got to weld tabs in there for the bolts to go through, and then uh, we'll prime it and paint it and be ready to install. Right now I got to cut these uh, these little tabs that will weld into the cross members there so we can uh, bolt through them and into the brackets that go into the frame so uh you got to be an inch and nine sixteenths so i've been measuring them like this and they're on a line and to cut as straight as I can with a angle grinder because I'm not really good at that. Clamping this uh, piece of angle iron to it. And then I can use uh, that as a guide. So you can hopefully be a little straighter. We have some upcoming challenges here. We have to try to wrestle this piece of steel uh, in, and of course, any of you guys who've done buses know you got those chair rails on the side that come in, and they've got to get sort of under those, and then we have to go under this piece right here, and then also be notching around the chair rails on the side over there. So. Uh, I just predict that this is going to be a big wrestling match, and uh, there might be some, there might be some, some colorful language used. So if you, ha we'll have to bleep stuff out. But if you have small children watching, just be be prepared. All right. Uh, can you lift your end up so you can kind of slide it through sideways. All right. I'm going to go in there. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's not gonna be easy. No, I'm already like super sweaty, so it doesn't help that my hands keep slipping. Yep. Hi. Yeah, this is comical to say the least. The what? This is comical to say the least. Why? It's just like making like sounds, you know, like the that. Oh my goodness! That was dramatic. Okay. Okay. So what I think needs to happen. See how this is on the chair rail here? Mhm. Mm I think I gotta get underneath and, and push, push up, and you've gotta snap that in place there. Okay. Okay. I'm getting ready to lift. Okay. Okay. 
Oh my goodness. Next is we got to measure and cut the notches for the next piece. It was a miracle. It was a miracle? Yeah. All right, we're going to tack weld this try to keep it. Now we'll go to the other side to try to make sure it's even. All right, we tack welded all across that seam. It actually looks pretty straight and even. So I'm gonna put a couple beads, maybe, I don't know, quarter, every th quarter, quarter of the way over. I don't wanna do too much because it'll heat up and warp, so a little bit at a time, but I'll get something a little bit stronger to hold it, and then uh, we'll keep filling it in gradually. I thought getting that first piece in was gonna be more complicated, but. This one in front of us got all these funky jogs on them, so I gotta transcribe them. Probably be better if I made a template out of cardboard, but I don't really have any of that size kicking around, so I guess we're just gonna have to measure twice, cut once kind of deal. Yeah. Good news is it seems symmetrical and the numbers are the same on both sides, so that's promising. Slide that over the fuel line. Tank. Wait, wait. See that fire edge though? It's gonna go up. Wait, no, no, no. That far corner. That's gonna go up. There we go. That wire down below on the right here. Step, yeah, step right over there and pull that wire up. Get it stuck in there. So we got the floor down, and now we got to work on these tubs here, the wheel wells. Uh, as uh, like a lot of them in schoolie land, from what I see, you know, you all the gravel kicks up and 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 uh, rusts out the ends. The side was actually uh, rusted out too. So I attempted to. I took some uh, scrap from the floor and I cut the old sort of flap off. And I tried welding it in there, and it's okay, but it was super slow. Um, you know, this steel I used the 14 gauge, which was pretty good. This is a little bit less, and it was, I don't know, it just seemed like I'd burn through it unless I used a really slow speed, and it just took forever. So uh, I'm thinking with these, I'm just going to cut them and then rivet. I'll glue you know, some, some, some epoxy, maybe just some construction adhesive, and rivet and glue it on there because I think it's, It'd be 10 times faster and easier. So for these, I uh, had to create, had to bend them up. And because I got this 14 gauge steel, it's, it's, it's pretty rugged. Even this long one, the, the brake that I can borrow, I don't think it's rugged enough to do it. So I've been using this very uh, uncouth, brutal, backwards, violent <laughs> uh, brake. I'm trying to think of some other good adjectives to describe it, but this is what I'm doing. I'm just sort of measuring where I want the bend to go. All right, so I'm going to put a mark here and here at the ends. And I got this uh, pretty big piece of angle iron. Um, used to be a uh, I bought a sort of a homemade router table that I modified, and this used to be the fence on it, but it's handy for a bunch of other things. So I'm just going to put those marks on the edge of the, just like that. I got some other angle iron. I forget, oh I think this was left over from uh, building skylight. And put these clamps in here.
crank them down as tight as we can. You'll see why in a second. And now we're going to hit it with this hammer. Not pretty, but I think it will work when this thicker steel will hold up longer than the thinner stuff. Plus, I already had it, so I might as well use it. That will go like that. I have to bend that one. I bent that one a little too much, but that's all right. It'll be easy to rivet it and then pivot it back down. Now i got to clean up all this stuff. Drilling holes and using Clico is just so I can see where it goes, so it lines up somewhat right. I <laughs> say I'm not a metal worker, so. All right, I think that'll work. Put on some 3M5200 uh, adhesive. Now I'll see if I can get this to. <laughs> Line up. And sometimes the clicos are helpful. To... Pull it in the right spot. Seems like if I put a rivet in, it's too tight, and then I can't get the other holes lined up. So. Okay. Time to get these wheel wells back on, and there's all the little holes on the sides that we got to get lined up with the outside. So, Katie's rustling them in place, and uh, we're clicking them out here. All right, which are we gonna go? Um, either way right now, no. All right, let's go to my right. Okay. So we got these handy dandy clicos here, and I. Holy cow, that went right in. Yeah. Holy cow. Every once in a while, it works for a second. Uh, I'm going to keep going right, I guess. And that's where it all ended. Uh, I can't see where it is. I'm going to try, try going back to the left. That went right in. Can you push that side down at all? This side down? Yeah, my left, your right. They, yeah, whatever that was, that seemed to, that straightened out the Clico. And that's in. All right. Now we can move to the floor edging. Oh yeah. So uh, we actually recycled these wider pieces from the ceiling when we ripped that out a couple videos ago. And then we took it to Oxford Auto and they had a machine that helped us bend it into these L's in order to support the floor because before it just kind of dipped and sagged in places because it was only in contact with the cross numbers which are about here and here and it would sag in the middle. And once we bolted and like glued down these pieces. It held the floor up more stable, more stable and sturdy. And then we filled up these gaps with other pieces of metal and some caulking, just to make sure that there is the least amount of uh, water able to come up through the floor. We're at the end of the project now, at the, but we're talking about the beginning of the video because uh, you'll notice in some of the film clips we started with like eight feet of snow on the ground in March, and it was just a long process of. Tell you well, we're gonna maybe just kind of piece this together, and then you know the more we dug into it, and the more we found, it was just more rust. And then you know I brought uh, some, I brought the floor, the sort of the corrugated, it's got that sort of uh, I don't know dips and rises to it. And I brought it into a machine shop and said, you know, is there something you can fabricate like this? And they're like, oh well, let's think about it. And it was there for a month, and like, no, we really can't do it. And so sort of a long process of deciding to uh, finally just rip the whole thing out. So. Um, We'll show you kind of the trials and tribulations, and uh, it, again, it took a couple months, and uh, 
hopefully now it uh, is much uh, less rust than we started. All right, so that's our floor video. Uh, it's long, sorry, kinda. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just a long video and probably a lot of steps and stuff. We could have done in more detail, but it was getting pretty long. Uh, and again, I'm trying to rush to, a little bit to try to get things done so you can take it up to the river. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully we can get a sticker with it at this stage and then we'll uh, continue to work on it over the summer. But um, again, long process, ripping everything out, making the cross members, welding the steel in, getting the edging in. Um, yeah, just kind of kind of long, long and laborious process. Anything you want to add? No. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Everything's been yeah. said that needs to be said. We were freezing, and then we sweat to get death, and then we bled. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just kind of the process with it. So, um, uh, you know, like, subscribe, do those things that you do, uh, and I certainly appreciate having you along for the ride. Uh, so hopefully, uh, again, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.